All right, recording. I watched Norbit right the other second. evening. Hold on a second, Rob. And that's right. a really that's a really bad movie. But what it's is good. It? Norbit. Yeah, can I? Just I hate say, Norbit. Can I just? It's say awful, to everybody but it's yeah, but it's entertaining. It's Wait, can I just say to everybody that's watching, which is this us three, welcome <laughs> to the twenty third episode of Born in Trouble. I'm your host, John X. Coming to you live today and every day, if you see me. Anyway. We're on YouTube Live. We're on YouTube Live right now. But first, before we even introduce you, I'm going to introduce my brother, Mr. Brooks with the good looks. Assalamu alaikum, Mr. Robert Brooks. Hello, What's going on, brother? Loving the bow tie, brother. How you be? Abis. That's all that matters. Abis. And of course. You bees. Uh. Uh, well, listen, from the CT, Wayne King, coming straight from mm-hmm. the Detroit, Mr. Grant Lancaster. That's right. What up, though? What up, though? We started this uh, recording by talking about my notes and what I was writing, and, you know, we might as well pick it up. Why are women so angry and nasty with each other? What was that stat that you were? <laughs> Listen, we were, into, we were, there was another group in, um, in the Axid group online, and they had that thing this week when this brother came out, he asked a question to the group, why are black women fat? And other groups of women are not fat. And um, I, I read the post when it first went up, I swear to God, I just logged on to Facebook, and it was the first thing that popped up on my screen was that post. And I was going to write something, but then I said to myself, I said, nah, you know what? Let me see what somebody else writes first. And I waited, and I lost track of it. And 30 minutes later, I went and I did something else. 30 minutes later, I sat back down, looked at the Facebook again. There were like 25 comments on that shit. And this is in a small group one mm-hmm. line. Boy, black women were mad. Ooh. Why he say that? Why'd he have to go and say that? It was just, they just like lost their wigs. They, they were mad about the question itself. They were, they mad, were about, mad about the question. They were mad about the question itself. They were just basically like, well, what were the answers? What were the answers? A lot of the answers were the proper, yeah. were the proper response, and the proper response is simply, like all women are basically obese at this point in time. Most of us are. Most of the world right now is obese, and um, it's unfair. For more than half to, of our population is. What was that, Rob? And most more than almost half the American adult population is obese. Okay. Regardless of race. Right. Like that's just what, but right now obesity is what we export. Right, that's what right. we. That's our gift that we give to other countries. We send the McDonald's and obesity. You see, like we know this, <laughs> like we know this. So it's like it's not such a big deal. But like my response was, I wrote like exactly what I said. I was here like twenty minutes ago. I was going to say something, and then now my response is no comment. Because, but I did it with a joke because, like, really, it's no comment because I didn't want to hear all the all the things. But those women were tight, boy. Oof, were they tight about that comment? And apparently, this is a brother who does not like the sisters anyway. He travels from country to country, and he says that he's not going to, he's not going to ever marry a black woman anyway. So he has he had no problem saying that because that's what he feels. A black, he's not gonna marry a black woman. He's not gonna marry a black woman. Period. Or he's not gonna marry a black woman from America. Um, period was what he was saying. He's not feeling black women. You know, black American women, and I can imagine it would kind of overflow outside to Africans and other women as well. Yeah, I don't know, man. If you see, if you see them black German chicks, man, you will that change your mind about some shit right there. I change your Listen. mind. You might change your mind about some shit. I don't see some Guyanese, some Somalian. Look, 
May want to introduce you here. to some American schnitzel in Germany. Is that what you're saying? You might want to mm-hmm. you know, make some Bavarian pretzels together. Depending on Dixon Grubens. Yeah, 15 is my limit. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Yeah, 15 is my living on stitching groupers. Classic blazing saddles. <laughs> Baby, I'm not from Havana. Brother T-Von Little, his, his due and his respect. But B, why, but why, oh man, why did he set them off that way? But why are they so mean to each? It, 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 Go ahead. Go ahead. That's a, that's a very good question. It's a very good query as to why, I mean, you raised the young lady. Grant's in the in the process of raising a second young lady. Like I found out early on with with me, you know, with my daughter. Like if they're if you're going to gather a group, make it an even number. Mm-hmm. Everybody needs to be able to pair. Everybody needs to be able to pair off because if it's an odd number, they're just going to take turns ganging up on somebody. Everybody's going to cry at some point during the afternoon. Everybody's going to get whipped on. Oh wow! What was this thing yeah. you were just saying? It, it, it wasn't fun. What was the stat you were st- stating um, before we started the show, Rob, about women? It wasn't a stat. It was just that um, women, a lot of women like to have male friends. Mm-hmm. And they're like, I would, rather, I would rather have a male friend who loves me unconditionally than a female friend who secretly hates me. Mm-hmm. Like, you know where you stand with, with men generally, mm-hmm. whereas women – will, you know, they'll sit there and they'll air kiss and they'll do all the right thing. And then the moment the one person turns their back, they go and list all the faults that person has. Mm, like right. women tend to sort of hang out with the enemy, which is, the, which is their friends. Which is not cool, honestly. No, no, it's not cool in any way. I mean, we pretty but that's, much... That's... Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I, think it, I think it has a lot to do with just the, the way that that we are as men and as women, men ha- have, have physical kind of altercations. So, so like we'll fight like, or wrestle or whatever we do. And then it's over, mm-hmm. right? We move on and, and now you my boy again, women don't have that physical piece to get rid of. So what they have is, is talking right. And mind games, so that's where that comes in. I think that's where that that and they and they get vicious with it. That's where that mean spiritedness comes in. Is that they they because they not gonna get physical with one another. You know what I mean? And they could, but they don't because what they what they rather do is just fuck with you emotionally. Yeah, they'd rather go out and sleep with your boyfriend, sleep with your man. You right. Know, that's what they do to each other. And then of course it's the man's fault because we're just weak creatures. Nobody's going to give that up, right? you know, but that's generally what it, how it happens. But, I, I, you know, women are just so mean to each other. I don't understand why they would, like, I don't understand the whole matriarchy thing where I was watching something online where this black woman was saying that everyone just needs to listen to black women and just subjugate themselves to black women. And that just has never worked for me. Because that just because you're a black woman doesn't mean you're intelligent. And you're very bitchy to each other. And like, Rob, you learn pretty early that you can't even, that they'll pick one off of the vine. So it's like, let's not do that. How about that? And the whole point of that episode, what they were saying in those comments in that thread was that everybody is picking on black women. And as a black woman, it's very difficult today because everybody's picking on them. And I have to say that's probably partially true. So let's stop picking on black women. And we'll change the subject. There's plenty of other people to pick on. Like, I can pick on Flavor Flav. Grant, Flavor Flav sang, sang the national anthem last night, bro. Did he do a good job with it? I, I haven't had the, the heart to watch it. I, I'm the same way. I can't watch it. But Yeah, I, I haven't watched these. I know Flav is a musician, though. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like he could play, he plays a bunch of instruments. Mm-hmm. I don't know if he could sing or not. I don't know if he could sing or not, but I'm sure, you know, he, I, I'm guessing that he didn't Roseanne bar the national anthem. Well, no, we haven't heard calls for boycotts. So I'm assuming he didn't Roseanne right. bar it. Right. Yeah. If, 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 
if he if he had done a horrible job, I'm sure we would know that he did a horrible job already. Well, what I was thinking was the man who was in one of the most pro-black rap groups, probably the most pro-black rap group that ever um, hit the arena and hit the world. Um, takes an Asian you, think, you think they were blacker than X Clan? Nah, they weren't black in the next clan. <laughs> no, nobody they weren't was, black in the next clan. Nobody was black in the next clan. Yeah, but, black, know, I'm black, y'all, and I'm black, y'all. I'm black, 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 y'all. <laughs> but you know the irony of yeah, that, I was just is, listening to X Clan today. You know, just the irony of a man that was in the group that made a it takes a nation of millions to hold us back. Actually, thirty years later, singing the national anthem, like whoa. You know, I mean, listen, we're all American citizens, and, you know, there's a certain amount of respect and responsibility that comes with that. But is there? <laughs> I mean, bro. But, but, hey, but this, this, this capitalism thing, when it works in your favor, man, it's really good. Right. It's really good, you know. When, when the capital thing, when the capitalism thing works out for you, you gotta love it. It makes you a makes you a fan. You're getting a flyby and you're getting a full applause right now, Rob, because <laughs> that's pretty much it. You know, money is what separates this entire world and this entire country and the entire world. Let's just call it what it is. You could say that there's a war in Gaza, but it's really just a, a roll through. And just a little while ago, they were just um, said something on CNN, I believe, or MSNBC, that it turns out that Netanyahu had been giving Hamas money in order to prop them up. So that way they could actually have enough to actually go and attack Israel. It's like it's like a psyop. But or does, that just kind of just shows you full circle that it's really all about the money. It's always about the money. Somebody is getting paid money to do X, Y, or Z, and they're pushing it through. And yeah. Flavor Flav got the money, bro. You know, they even gave him Bridget Nielsen. They didn't give him an American chick. They gave him a, a crazy European chick, but they gave him one. He got his blonde hair and blue eyes and everything. Didn't he give her back, though? It doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't matter. He got it. It's a gift. From the gods. Not really. Yeah, well, I, I, I thought he did a Nino Brown. I thought he Nino Brown, Bridget Nielsen. Actually, I think who gave her back, I think Schwarzenegger is the one who gave him, gave Bridget Nielsen back to St- Sylvester Stallone, but that was in the 90s when they were doing that whole flipping thing. And, right. And that was that. But Flavor's come full circle now, bro. He's singing the national anthem. I guess it takes a nation's a million. Next thing you know, they'll be doing a little soft shoe. Well, I guess it takes. Listen, a, if I, you if you do a reality show, mm-hmm. once you do a reality show, once you do a reality show, anything is on on board. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? All all money down is a bet at that point. I mean, literally, the jumping point for him was probably even more than the Bridget Nielsen thing. The whole flavor of love thing. Oh, right? Oh yeah, he's a lover. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Once, once you do a reality show, all and money then, is down. All oh money, you're, you're you're in for whatever. Like yeah. you're, you're you 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 officially like you put up the sign that says it's it's a big neon yeah. sign on your wall that says we'll, shame we'll, 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 with a line through it. There's right. no shame in your game ever. Yeah. Once you go reality show. Well, it takes a nation of millions. Yeah, he did. To he did what, what was it like? Yao back. Yow back. It takes a nation of millions to hold hold Yao back. Because I'm over here now. That's the way that works. I'm over here now. That's yeah, but I mean, but to, 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 well, here's the thing though. Public Enemy was on the, Public Enemy was on the Grammys not too long ago. Yeah. So, so you can, you know, I mean, you can't, you can't say fuck the Grammys and then be on the Grammys. I mean, you can, but, you but can. I mean, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's years later. But it's years later. It's years it's years later. There's 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 yeah, not- Stan softens. Yeah, I get it. So he, so, and that's what I'm saying. So even for Flay, you know what I mean? Like, I understand that you know, he got all these. They rumor is that he has all these children. You know, maybe he needs the money or whatever. So he did the reality show. Maybe he needs money again. So he, you know, maybe he gonna tour the world singing the national anthem. It's just amazing to me though, like that nobody even brought it up. 
that was the crazy part. No, to me, it was like nobody brought up that Flavor Flav, member of Public Enemy, is now singing the national anthem. Because you know? he's been in the public eye, he's been a jester for far longer than right. he's been a member of Public Enemy. Like, right, exactly. The Public Enemy thing was, you know, late 80s, mid 90s, and he's been iconic ever since, but he's done so many other things in between that people forget that he was once a revolutionary. Yeah, you know, true. It's kind of like, you know, I went to Temple, and Bobby Seale was teaching at Temple when I was there. Wow. You know? But Bobby Seale, at that point, was known more because he was writing barbecue books <laughs> than as a founder of the, of the Black Panthers. Mm. Like, barbecue with Bobby. Yeah. Pick it up yep. on Amazon and Kindle right now. Barbecuing with Bobby. <laughs> That's right. I want to say he's got like three different barbecue books. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, now you can't have a you can't have a true revolution without ribs? some good barbecue. Now, without ribs, <laughs> that's, that's, you know, you gotta yeah. you gotta feed the troops. That's right. Well, no, we people fed. Yeah. You go out fighting, but you know you, you might can't, do... you can't lead the people if you can't feed the people. Well, you're gonna have to use a smoker though. And they because... came up with the breakfast programs, so I mean, there was feeding people is in, is intrinsic to their to their well being. Yeah, I just got a lot of how they operated. Today. Yeah, I just got a lot yeah, of jokes true. tonight. You're going back and forth. It's like, <laughs> got a smoker. This is why the revolution failed. That's right, the revolution, or has it failed? <laughs> well, you know, the brothers. The brothers weren't so mad anymore. Yeah, they was giving out jobs. They was giving out jobs. They went in with guns and came out with jobs. The brothers weren't so mad anymore. <laughs> Lawrence Williams III. Since the end of my work activity, I have been. I've watched. I'm gonna get you, sucker. Watch Monty Python and the Holy Grail. I watched. Norman. Oh my god! I've been on all the foolish movies. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So you've been enjoying your time back. That's right. Robert came back after working for the man. Unfortunately, the Phillies did not go to the World Series this year, but fortunately for us, we get to see Rob sometime before he starts his next schedule and his next trip, which is uh, the basketball team. And he'll be out on the road for a Got a basketball game on November 7th. Man, you get no break. Got a game on November 7th. No real break. That's all right. Yeah, what do they what look, like? look like this year? They, they, they're going to be all right. They're going to be all right. They are probably deeper than they have been in 10 years. They can stay healthy. They have the preseason player of the year. Kid from England, Amari. That's the seven footer? Yeah. Uh-huh. He's um, he's big boy. He get up off the ground. He can block shots. He's a soccer player in high school for the most part. So he's still okay. learning the offensive so he's game. Has, he's still learning the drop step. His footwork isn't bad. He just has he what a lot of lower leg injuries though. And you got to be oh aware yeah. Of that. Uh, Is this guy gonna yeah, be yeah. Wait, shot blocking machine? Ah! I don't know. He's got a lot of growing up to do if he's gonna be big time. But I mean, as a defensive presence right now, he could he changes the game just by being underneath the basket. Hmm. Well, so it's it's unusual in that in that level. Find a guy like that. Mm-hmm. Well, I wish them the best uh-huh. of luck. I wish you the best of luck. At least you'll get to see some yeah, for sure. interesting games, and that's the most important thing while you're out there. Well, that and the paychecks, I guess that that also helps too. That also helps with it. The, the paycheck does help. Money helps with everything. There you go. Money it's good social lubricant. Money is a good thing. Are you color or play by play? Play by play. All right. Man, play by play is so hard, man. It's so I mean, at the college so level, it's so it's so fast. These guys just get up and back. Like my color yeah. guy hardly has a chance to speak because it's brick running the other right. way, you know, <laughs> turnover going back the other way, right? You know, and your job is yeah, that's, that's and, that's and you can't really wolf on the kids. You can't wolf on the kids like you would like if they're an NBA player, you'd crack them. For right, service. they do, but you know. You, you're stuck saying things like, yeah, a little bit too much dribbling there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Instead of pick the ball up, yeah. So how, how, did, how did you – let me ask you this. How did you train 
play by play? Good. Or was it mostly on the job training? On the job training. I, okay. I worked with a lot of guys, you know, I was producing for a lot of guys who did it. And one day they were like, Hey, would you, you know, would you like to do color for these games? I was doing color. And then the lead guy was taken off. He's like, you think you can do play by play? So I said, in front of the TV for like two weeks, any basketball game that came on, just trying to figure out, you know, spots on the floor, right. you know, how to, how to identify some of the moves and just did it. Sucked for a couple of years, but got to the point yeah. where I was comfortable at it. Yeah. How to talk about it, man. This is, I, I, I always find that so amazing, dude. It's, but I, you know, you got to find you, the hardest part is like varying up your language. Cause you, you know, you come down the floor. I did oh, a women's sure. game once, and, you know, they shoot less than 50% from the floor always. They shoot like 30. So, like, how many different ways can you say the ball came off the rim or the ball's off the glass, missed, right. air ball, right. you know, just a bit yeah. short, you know, uh-huh. all like that. Would, that's t- that's a test. Mm-hmm. Like, I know guys who sit down in the off. like one of my baseball guys, he'll sit down like, okay, Today, we're just going to figure out how many different ways we can call a ground ball to second base. Well, and wow. just start listing them. Well, well, mm-hmm. When you're doing a women's game, it sounded like you were kind of beating up on black women, and we've had enough of that. So, we'll have to ease it <laughs> um, that, At that point in time, um, Drexel was recruiting a lot from Eastern Europe. So, we were not, we were not beating up on black people then. There was oh, one or two on the team, but there were a lot of Eastern Europeans. Oh, on a lot the team. of, of Ing- Ingas and Helgas. There, there were a couple of Ingas and Helses. There was a lot. There was lots, lots of them with, um, you know, Olacek, and there were some weird names in there. Mm-hmm. More hair on your leg on their legs than you have on yours. That type of deal. No, 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 no. Yeah, I can you know. Go. I could go completely wrong this evening. I can see where this is like. I'm gonna need you guys' help to basically keep me. Hey, you're like you're like stewing right now. You have so many inappropriate things to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'm I'm angry at another issue, and I can't. What are you really angry about, it. John? I can't really discuss it. You know, it's the work thing. It's the same thing. Same dude, and everything. Same dude, causing problems. In my life. Oh, same dude. Same dude. Causing the same types of problems. Same dude. <laughs> I just want to, like, yeah, I mean, really, I can't say what I want to do because then if I decide to do it, I'm going directly to jail. Probably going to d- directly to jail well, anyway. You're going to so. go to jail anyway. Yeah, probably going anyway. Yeah, so. whether, you, whether you announce it in advance or not. Yeah. I mean, there's a chance I may be able to pull a rabbit out of a hat there, and you know, not like I'm soliciting a hitman here on this show. If anyone knows one, <laughs> if anyone knows one, who everybody works knows cheap, one, yeah. right? Anyone knows one who works cheap? Things might change. Then things might change. I, none of that. None of them work cheap. No, no? The, the one, you definitely want to pay top dollar for a hitman. Yeah, I don't think you want to. I don't think you want the Kmart of of hit. Yeah, <laughs> red light special, blue light, the blue light special guy. I don't think yeah, you want. No, that. no, no, because he talks. He talks because yeah. of problems. Well, I think we've already yeah. talked enough on the show about it, so it's. I guess it's off the table right now. <laughs> it's off the table. If anything happens, you know, or they, or, they, or they're slightly imbalanced. I used to notice, dude, Anthony. I, I don't know where he is now. Got to admit, I, I, I was into some. I was into. I was in with some people. It was a girl that got me into this world, obviously, um, and she knew lots of mob people. But this guy actually pulled his gun one day. He was working on a construction site. There was a bee messing with him, and he tried to shoot the bumblebee. Wow! Like nice. those are the kind of people you get when you go for a bar basement hitman. Yeah, wow. and they're gonna get you in trouble. Yeah. Yeah, so this is this is the type of advice that we're giving out here tonight on on Born in Trouble. If you're gonna hire a hitman, don't don't hire a hitman. Yeah, go, don't, go, yeah. go top dollar. You shouldn't do it, but if you're gonna do it, go top dollar. Don't pay. Don't be cheap. Don't yeah, cheap don't, out. Don't don't right. Don't try to save the five hundred dollars. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. It's not worth it because you can make that while you're free. 
But if you're not free, yeah, you can't make that. You can't make that money back up. So, yeah, more than likely, if you try to save five hundred dollars, you're just going to give it to your lawyer later. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right. So, yeah, that's good advice, man. We're here for the people. We're here for the people. So you know, this is really a slow week. I mean, I. <laughs> What everybody else is talking about, what everybody else is into, I'm not really feeling any of it that's going on right now. Um, so, I mean, and I really don't want to talk about the Middle East and and Europe, even though there are a lot of people that are protesting in the streets and this Israel stuff is like crazy. And we pretty much already covered it. If you keep on speaking about it, then they are going to think that there's a problem with you. Or that you have a problem with it. And the only thing I can say is, like, I heard that in Yahoo came out today that this is a fight between good and evil. And I was like, truer words were never spoken. Now I'll just leave it at that. But. Yeah. In life. He may be, mis- he may be misidentifying which side is good and which side is evil. Right. Because exactly. it generally tends to spin around a little bit. Yeah. You know, but war is hell, and watching people uh, die in that manner, it just it just is the way that it is. But I don't really have anything pressing to talk about this week, man. I really don't. The only thing that was had came to my mind was yesterday. I, I texted you cats because I was having a metamorphosis um, period of time, and I realized that with some of the things that have been going on in my personal life that I hadn't been paying attention and hearing everybody that was talking to me. And I made some corrections today and I actually listened to some people. And I think that it helps. And then I started like taking that and ascribing that to a bigger scale of people and things. And I really think that the fact that people feel like they are not being heard, they're not being represented, is the reason for a lot of the problems that we're having in the world today. A lot of the people that are just losing it because they just feel like no one is listening to them. Nobody cares about them. And it's all based upon the monetary system that we have here in the United States of America, which is taking the voice from so many people. And that's not how we were raised. The concept is ideally one one vote, one voice. And we know the reality of that is probably a lot less. But the one voice thing, when you start screaming down people's voices and what how they feel about things, it's going to cause a quite a amount of um, mental distress. And I think that we're a country right now that's mentally distressed. I would not disagree with that. Did you come to right. this this realization? While you were watching the Giants and thinking, nobody fucking listen to me about this quarterback, dude. He's not worth this money. Well, I mean, that's just one of the things. The Giant organization, <laughs> I just like, you know, I could apply it to them, those bastards. Um, simply pay Saquon. That's it. They traded Leonard Williams today. Thanks, Leonard, for being a New York Giant. You did a great job for the time yeah. that you were here. Yeah, fire sale is on. Fire sale is on. Um, these idiots paid $40 million to this guy. They could have just played him in his rookie contract. They would have still had him on his rookie deal if they would have extended him before they came. And now they're talking about trading Saquon, who's their only player that's any good, which makes no sense. Giant fans are saying, yeah, trade him for draft picks until those draft picks are bust, and then you've got nothing for it. Right. And I was reading a comment, and somebody said, like, they should just trade Saquon. They gave all these different reasons. Meanwhile, he's the only one that, if it wasn't for Saquon, they're not even in position to win that game one Sunday. And this white guy made a comment. He's like, yeah, do you feel that way just because he's black? Just because he's a black guy. And I have I read the comment. I was like, this is another. This is going to be another black-white fight. And I looked at the comment. I looked at the guy, and it was a white guy who said it. So... Now other white guys are calling out other white fans for being racist. And people actually are rooting along racial lines now. And everything is so polarized. It's just like, it's so stupid. 
And then in the, in the meantime, it's like, there's so much information out there. And there's so many bad takes on that information out there. And that's, it's disheartening. It's really weird because you have one this here and this one guy, it's obvious that like football is a, on a football team, there are guys that get paid money because of what they perform. And then there are other guys that get paid because of how they perform, but also what they do in the locker room and what they mean to the organization and the team. And these people think that everything, that their opinions are actually more important than the opinions of players that are on the team and the coaches and all this other stuff. And I was looking at that, and then I read something on the internet about this guy. He was breaking down pretty much everything that we say, and nothing was um, untrue. And he was saying that rich black people and poor black people, though we inherit the same skin, we don't have the same problems because rich black people are generally living in a different world. You know, those are your Robert Brooks of the world that are going golfing. And then there's poor people like me who has <laughs> somebody's to, like, got to get that. Apolog- what? Yeah. Well, somebody's got to go. Somebody's got to. And then there's poor people like me who basically like get spit on. We drink $5 water. With my big $5. <laughs> we drink $5 water. Listen, <laughs> Pellegrino B. Pellegrino is not, I repeat, it is not hoity-toity. It's just delicious. It doesn't matter. And, and, it doesn't matter how much I, I See, now here's the thing. Here's the thing. While, you know, now um, my salary puts me in a good, solid, upper-middle-class uh, category, um, you know, I frequented bodegas, and you're not going to find the – you might find a San Pellegrino in a bodega. You definitely got to find that fruity San, San Pellegrino in a bodega. There you go. Okay. And you got like the one with orange. Yeah, I, I got the one with the. I got the. Yeah, I, I got the. Listen, but you know, my my point being though, like you know, I was his information was was almost right. I would say almost right, and the almost part of it comes. He was like saying that even though we inhabit the same skin, we are not the same. We are the same, and it really depends on where you are as a person. Because the same way you can say that that rich black person is looking down on you, you as a poor black person are also looking down on that rich black person at the same time by making such a blanket statement. A lot of times these hands up, they're not coming from white hands, they're coming from other brothers that are reaching back and trying to actually give into the community. But if you automatically have a thought process that one group is already separating from the other, And then you're going to make those people, what you're essentially going to do is you're going to make those people prove that they are down with you. And I don't know how that works. I don't know how you prove to someone that you... It it doesn't generally. Yeah, what do you do? You go out on a drive-by with them just to prove that you're down? You do a robbery, you hop somebody? Are you going to come and are you going to then come and do that person's taxes? Quid pro quo? It just doesn't work that way. We can't be separated on these lines, but at the same time, we are separated on these lines. And at the same time, in a healthy... Well, I mean, they've been doing their best to... They've been doing their best to sort of keep that divide going. You know, there are those those people who talk about the civil rights movement and talk about the fact that basically what they did was they took the, the brightest out, moved them into the PWIs, and left the other brothers, you know, to swim, to defend for themselves. Right. You know. I mean, so they've had a, they, they've been, the, the divide and conquer strategy has been alive for a long time. It's effective. You know, the problem is that people buy into it, though. Flavor it's only Flav- effective because people buy into it. Flavor Flav brought into it this weekend. He sang the national anthem. And that's all good. He made his dough. No. And Flavor Flav bought into it when he went on Flavor of Love. Okay. All right. Like, yeah. like he took the check above all else at that point. Like, all right. So you know. I, you know, I can buy that. But I'm, um, I'm saying like you know this division, and then when you t- when you talk about um, this economy that we live in, aren't there supposed it in all economies that we live in? I think it's kind of disingenuous when certain groups of poor people say that 
or hold it against other people within their the community for doing well. Somebody has to somebody has to be a winner, somebody has to be a loser. That's just life. Whether you're in no matter what type of government system or economic system that you live in, there are always going to be be people that do better than others. Some people have this much, some people have this much, some people have this much. Who's going to do better? Really depends. I'm not chopping off two inches for anybody. <laughs> but it's, it's like that. It's that George Carlin joke uh, where he said, he says, the rich make all of the money, pay none of the taxes. The middle class do all of the work and pay all of the, all taxes. the taxes. And the poor people are just there to scare the shit out of the middle class mm. to make sure that they keep coming to work. Right. That's that's what this economy is. You know what I mean? So, yes, somebody there. There's always going to be somebody that does better. Right. Right. But bet, better is relative. Better is relative for one, and it's we typically base it on uh, material type things, not necessarily what they're doing. Right. So there's no. It, at my job, there's nobody in my position that's doing any better than me because we all make the same money, right? Yeah. But somebody has a house up north and a boat. And somebody else somebody, has got to be a somebody somebody living check to check. And, mm-hmm. right, and, and there's another cat that's living check to check. Mm-hmm. So so what? It, like I said, these things are relative, man. Like it, it, it depends on there, – there's myriad factors that, that make it – that make you where you are or put you where you are, make you what you are. It's not just, it's not just that somebody else is doing better. Somebody else could be doing just the same as you, but they just understand. They have a better understanding of something. But I've been in, in, or they didn't have, you know, they didn't have X burden to carry beforehand. Right. You know, but also like maybe if they didn't set us up in opposition of one another, like, Starting from the from three years old, maybe we wouldn't be such haters. Okay. You know, I remember a teacher uh, who I, I was not a fan of, and he and I got into it quite frequently. But I was in class with my, I think she's my ex girlfriend at the time, and our scores were reversed. Mm-hmm. I got a ninety two on the test. Flip that over. That's what she got, and he announced it to the class. Mm. I was like, maybe you should have studied with your boyfriend which caused me to say something really snappy to him. Cause like, mm-hmm. that's, that's nobody's fucking business. She got a fucking nine on her test. Like what's this public right. shaming shit about? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, but that's what they've set us up in opposition of one another for the longest time. Mm-hmm. Like name a, name a career or a profession that you get, that you succeed by doing everything on your own. There is no- everything is sort of a collective effort except for school. Right. No cheating. Look at your own paper. Don't don't work with anybody else. Don't talk. Like instead of it giving us good collective skills, good True. team building skills, they isolate us, make us do everything on our own, and then later on in life, we wonder why everybody's at each other's throats. And there's something to that because I I saw Man, there that's was a, a point. They did they did the same thing with someone at our Ivy League school. And they had all these black students that were coming in and they were failing these courses and the Asian students always did good. And this is a a viral TikTok video. And the woman, what she did was she uh, observed both groups, the Asian students and the black students. And she found out that that the black students were actually studying more. But the reason why the black students were flaming out is because though they studied more, the Asian students were studying together. So then she made the Asian students study together. Mm-hmm. I mean, the black students study together. And then all of a the sudden, their, class, their grades started going up and everything started working out for them because they were trained to not actually not trust one another and not work together. That's part of my problem with this asshole guy that I really want to, like, you know, find someone. Call me at 631. But, um, <laughs> but... I, it's part of the problem is is the fact that he seems to think that he's a fucking cowboy, and you're not a cowboy. It's like you were chosen to be on my team, and you essentially are working for me. So do the job that you're supposed to do, and work with me in order to get these things done. 
And it's going to get done, but it's just the fact that he's causing everybody so much drama and stress. Call my, my, my client, you know, who's basically recovering from um, a cancer treatment today. You're not even supposed to call her directly. Like, what the fuck, B? Like, but it's it all comes into that whole thing about when you're challenged and you feel like working together is actually the problem. When in reality, it's the solution. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know if I get better. I think every, like, uh, we're, we're like, you know, a couple of minutes into the show. Every three minutes, I'm going to give another number to my phone number. So, if any of you guys want to come back, <laughs> give me a <laughs> Five. <laughs> So, yeah, mm. figure it out. Give me a call. I might have some work for you if you're in the metropolitan area. But that's not I, the solution. You know, that's the solution that no, we've used no, for a long time, no. which is basically to take each other out, you know? So, Rob, how am I going to solve this problem, bro? How am I going to do it? Man? Yeah, you're not going to solve it the traditional way. You're just going to have to, you're going to have to wear this a little bit and th- th- then disassociate yourself. Yeah. Like he did what he did, and this will be the last business deal. So you're saying take you know? murder off of the table. I I would I would take murder off the table and you know, I would like you have a list of people like you send your Christmas newsletter to mm-hmm. and there's people get a fruitcake. Like he's gonna be on the fruitcake list. He's on the fruitcake <laughs> list for sure. <laughs> Right. Like you're, you're not telling them yeah. any of your personal business. You're wishing them well. Like Merry Christmas. Here's a fruitcake. Yeah, I got a rock. You're getting regifted, <laughs> brother. You're getting regifted every year. Yeah, but, but then again, you know, he's uh, he's Caribbean, right? So he might like fruitcake. Mm. Mm. Like some of them Caribbean folks actually like cake. Mm. Yeah. I know where you can eat first. Anyway. You still are depressed. Huh? I, I'm not really no, I'm not really depressed. I'm kind of like, I'm more like tired today. And really, honestly, we've taken a lot of weeks off from the show, but there's not really anything out there that I really want to talk about today. If I'm being honest about it, it's all, it all comes out as, this probably would have been a good week just to be like, eh, you know, I'm going to leave it alone. Yeah, but seeing, I guess what what happens with me is even though I don't pay attention to what goes on in these spaces, like I can't ignore. I know what's going on in Israel, and I the the simple fact of the matter is that I know what it is. I saw it coming. You, anyone who studied the region, could say that they've seen this coming. This is exactly what they've wanted to do for a long amount of years, for a number of years, and now they're implementing it and and all these people are dying. But at the same time, with the history of the Arabs, with the black community in that area, it is what it is. And um, really, if you look at it statistically, I don't mean to sound like I'm like hating on anybody, but the problem is, is like the truth sounds like hatred when it's so heinous, when it points out how heinous your actions were to get you in the position that you're in. And Semites, bro, the people who lived in that that region originally, look them up. Who are they? But but so let me ask this, isn't isn't this the whole point of controlling the narrative? Like so when you control a narrative, you can make people believe that they should care or they shouldn't care. Yeah. When you control the narrative, you make people believe that they should be together or they should be apart. You know what I mean? Like you, you create the divisions when you control the narrative. You see what I'm saying? So everybody's mental health. And that's really, that's really what we've been talking about without really talking about it since the show started today is mental health. Because you in a you in a semi I don't want to say depressed, but you feeling some kind of way right now about some things. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And that that constant, you know, when you talk about people, 
you mentioned earlier, people feeling like they're not heard and all this kind of thing. All of that is is just a product of this machine that we're a part of. It's a constant cycle, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it ain't like it used to be when records came out on Tuesday only. Right. Records coming out every day now. You know what I mean? So you get your favorite artists come out on Monday, and then by next Monday, you got 10 other albums. You ain't even listen to your favorite guy no more. Right. You know what I mean? So it, it, it's it's similar to that. Well, the point about not being heard, it was like, it was really a, a, it was a deep, empathetic moment for myself as I was sitting there because I was listening it and I was looking at it and I was watching this um, series on Netflix. I guess that also had me about the Sackler family. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen that about Oxycontin. I forget the name of this of the series. Painkillers. Painkillers. Is that painkillers? Painkillers. I haven't seen it yet. Oh, I heard man. it was pretty good. Oh, it was very good. And I, I'm just watching how this guy, how he essentially just killed. They he literally killed millions of people by for profit, and it's really okay because it was for profit. And the way that everybody behaved in that movie that made money off of that. And when you look at that from a spiritual standpoint, I don't see where there's any hope for humanity from a spiritual standpoint. When people will rubber stamp something like that so easily. And the person that actually allowed him to get away with it the first time was Giuliani. He assisted in basically getting this guy off at the end. And you have a large group of people that support Giuliani that have nothing in common with Giuliani. Nothing. His daughter is an, is an equestrian and doesn't, you know, and doesn't even talk to him. Is your daughter an equestrian? How many people out there, and that's really the only connection you got to look for. Is your daughter an equestrian? I knew I should have taken my aunt's offer to go to a equestrian day camp back in right. the day. Yeah. Damn it. Nah. See, I thought it, I thought it, I thought it was a bad concept, but I missed. I screwed that up. You missed the My point bad. of that. You missed the point. Yeah, I'm gonna a, a stick to that. This. Yeah, I could have known Georgina Bloomberg. I could have known um, Bruce Springsteen's kid. Like I, I'd have been, I'd have been plugged in, man. Yeah, I screwed that up. Yeah, I mean, this is this, the two worlds are so far apart. Here, and here, the here's the thing: where your 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 concern for humanity is. You know, I, I will I will ask you to hedge your your judgment on humanity in that um, the the crimes that you're reporting on right now, the, the attitudes that are truly sickening and allow people to behave in depraved ways. These are very American concepts, like some of these things don't fly in other countries. You mm-hmm. know, some of these behaviors and some of these for profit behaviors, the the attitude of just do it. And if it doesn't work, we'll figure it out later. That's very American. Profit first, enterprise first. That's American. There are lots of countries in Europe where they're not falling for the banana in the tail. They don't really care. You know, if it's going to make you money, if it's going to inflict ill on the general population. I'll be honest, I am finding it disgusting. And, you know, it's not as if I'm against a meritocracy. I am 100% for a meritocracy. But... But that's not what this is. No. This is like... And we don't have... The, the United States military is supposed to be the only true meritocracy, but even that's not because yeah. there are decisions that are made by people about who to put up for for promotions. There are ways to, to block people. But the United States is not a meritocracy. No, it's a... It, it's a the NBA and MLB. Those meritocracies. There's only one way to get on the floor. Yeah. No matter who your daddy is, no matter how much money you got, there's only one way to get on the floor, get on the court. America is feeling more and more like like a killing field, more than anything else. You look at what happened up in Maine, and that guy. It's like you know, I I don't know how stupid I don't know how stupid you can get as a state or as a group of people up there I go again Rob I'm sorry I'm calling people stupid again but the governor the former governor of that state is one of the most racist mofos that ever went through the has ever been on the face of this earth he came out and basically he didn't even he didn't sugarcoat or whatever 
He said, people that don't look like us, black people are pretty much our enemies. And these are the attitudes, these hateful attitudes that are in the state. But the problem is that in Maine, you got like six black people. And I think I know them all by first name. You know, there's no, <laughs> there's no black people there. I remember in, in college, that was the only Division One school that even remotely tried to give me any type of recruiting. And I looked it up, and it was like, you know, 0.01% on the campus. And I'm holding an acceptance letter from Howard in this hand and 0.01% to go play basketball in the fucking snow. With a or an obeying, baby. Huh? Or no. Or, been to or no. Yeah, you've been there, right? I've been to the I've been to, I've been to University of Maine. I've been up to R and O. Shit, when they were in the uh, America East, man, you would have been playing games in uh, New Hampshire, you know, northeastern places where they don't they don't shovel the sidewalks, man. Which snows, they just deal with it. Yeah, it's we're we're just like there's no possible way. You know, get and get to play Colgate once. A year. Those are some of the those are some of the most ridiculously racist stupid backwards thought processes that they're actually that they're cultivating there and they don't realize they're cultivating those those points of view and then what does he do he goes out he goes to a bowling bowling area and he kills them he kills them but the former governor will tell you that it's people that look like me and you he wants us harassed and kicked out of the state as soon as we drive through and in the meantime, this idiot is up here. This guy is going out here, and he's shooting all these people in a bowling alley. Another report of a woman in Texas getting stabbed to death because she's Muslim, and a guy stabbed her like 20, 30 times. And all these good guys with the gun are out there looking at this one guy stab a Muslim woman. And because she's Muslim, nobody jumps in. You know, he actually stopped, left the body, came back, and continued to stab her again. And these are, I am i just like, I don't understand, like, who am I going to be able to talk to? That's really my, my question. Who am I going to be able to talk to and actually level with them and, like, understand that their word is good and their thoughts are good because, or that they're actually genuine and not disingenuous people because of the fact that, They've been doing all these things that are so obvious right in front of your face that are just wrong, and nobody comes out and says that this stuff is wrong. But then you want to sit here and have a moral conversation or a moral equivalency conversation with me. It's it's disheartening. It is. Any thoughts on that? The world is starting to drag you down a little, John. The world is starting to drag you down a little, Johnny X. I think the world's is. beating you down a little bit. I think it is. I, I mean, listen, you can't have too much of this reality before you need to before you need to check out. But the problem is when it gets when it gets to this point, this is not when I check out. This is when I check in, because unfortunately, in the midst of all this stuff, there's like great opportunity, mm-hmm. and. I'm actually doing a lot of studying to actually change careers and change paths and, you know, take advantage of this. And there's going to be great opportunity. I'm going to do well in this new economy if I can dodge the bullets. If I can dodge the bullets, I'm going to do great in this new economy with everything that's moving yeah. forward. But it doesn't make, mean I have to actually like it. You know? Yeah, well... Just remember, chaos is a ladder, my man. Mm. So any, anywhere there's anywhere there's some bullshit going on, there's an opportunity. Oh yeah. And in America, in America, there's always some bullshit going on. Oh yeah, there's plenty. There's so much opportunity <laughs> out there right now. It's it's really sick. It's really sick, but it's a, it's not open to everybody. And like this brother was saying, it, but it is not open to everybody. It's like and. There are certain things that I could teach like certain people, but I can't just bring anybody in on what it, what's going to be going on and what the future is and what the new moves are and you know what the new economy is going to look like and how to take advantage of it. I can't do that. I can't do that. I can't teach it. I'd spend too mm-hmm. much time trying to explain it to them. 
And also, like, these things require a... You have to have backing to get into these places and to get into these circles. And this is where we're moving. And it's just... But I'm just sad about everything, everyone getting left behind and how they're getting left behind. They're all killing... They're killing it. Listen, I don't care, I don't care if a racist shoots another racist, but then again... I do, because if you're so crazy that you're going to shoot each other, just, there's nothing good. We got to, this shit has got to right. change, that's bro. Some shit. This shit has got to change, bro. It's got to change. And it's not going to. We're going to have four more years of Joe Biden or two and a half years of Joe Biden. Um, that's going to make people even more fucking nuts and crazy. Nobody can buy houses, so no one's... I was thinking, I was like, you guys, you guys really make my life so much better in everything you do. Because, you know, I was speaking to you the other day, Grant, and we were la- we laughed. You know, we had like three or four mm-hmm. good, like, you know, real laughs. I speak to Rob all the time, and we have like really, really, really good laughs. Like, you know, honest stuff. I speak to Gene, you know, we have good laughs. I even speak to Reg, and... We have good laughs, and that's what makes everything okay. But then I think about all the people that don't have friends that make them laugh. They have nothing right. to look forward to when, uh, during the course of a day. You have women that are so unhappy, so unhappy, that all they want to do is make a, make a ninja's life like miserable. And that doesn't even make them happy. And they're still doing it. You have men who are so unhappy that they're making them, they're making their spouses, their wives, the women that are around them that they're supposed to be charged to protect, extremely unhappy. And it's all being passed down to the kids at the same time. It's just like things have got to get yeah, depression in the country. Man. It, the country is really depressed. The country is really, really yeah. depressed. And everyone I speak to is like and, going to form of it. Go ahead. But he, here's one of the things, though. Like once they, once you put a name on it, now it's easier for somebody to claim. You see what I'm saying? Like once, once you label it depression, all right. Now I got, I got a word for it. There's some, you know, WebMD got some symptoms on it, probably, and I can look it up and and diagnose myself as depressed. But that's I, I don't know that that's necessarily what it is, man. I mean, I'm not saying that it's not. But I'm saying, I mean, sometimes you just don't feel your best. How do you, and it's, it's just that simple. How do you deal with a collective consciousness that's depressed? Because that's what we really have. We have a collective consciousness right. of depression. That's what, Exactly. I agree with that. And it's and multiple I I had, levels of that. Right. I wish I had the answer. Because they've done a really effective job of sort of so i mean you have this you know you have this displaced group of former africans right and everywhere that colonialism has touched their foot you have an issue between different hued people you know you go down to puerto rico and the dominican republic and you know they'll swear to you they ain't black mm-hmm. hi bro i'm looking at you Right. Look at that. I see you. And they and they blacker than me. You you blacker than me. Yeah. You way blacker than me. But you but you ain't black. Okay. I get. I hear you. I hear you. But you also have just as many displaced, um, undereducated white folk. You know. And because of everything that's gone before us in the in the history of this country, they feel that they they're entitled to a certain position above certain other groups. So it pisses them off that they've been here for three, four generations and, you know, that this Asian family moves in and their kids go to Harvard while my kids go work at the factory. Or their affirmative action is going to let this person have a spot in college that should probably go to my kid. Well, if your kid was supposed to go there, they'd go there. That's mm-hmm. not. Mm-hmm. But they've created all of these factions. And so there are so many different groups to fight amongst each other that to try and to try and ameliorate the feelings of all the dissatisfied people. Nobody can do that. It's not just facts. Nobody can do that. It's also false facts and false realities. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, they're, 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 but they're, they're, they're bumping it up with, they're reinforcing 
the ideas right. to keep the separations going. And it's all, and all of it is done just so that, you know, the bottom line is what this, it's the same thing that we always say, rich Republicans, rich Democrats, rich black people, rich white people, rich Hispanic people, rich French people, um, they all go to the same places. And they, they may intermarry one or two of them and everything. And it's not such a big, big deal because they are coming from money and everything. Now you take a, a poorer white person and they're then and building have, on that money. They're, they're reinforcing fortunes. Yeah. They're reinforcing fortunes. And we are sitting up here like generally like mad. Everyone is mad at everything that's going on. And I, I don't see it as being sustainable, but neither is the time on the show. Somehow I got through an hour and two minutes of rambling. Man, that was a good segue. Oh, thank that, you, that was an A1 segue right there, dog. Thank you, Grant. A1. I, I, I'm trying, you know, despite the fact that I'm, that I'm going through it right now. I don't know. I, I was I was just walking and I was thinking. I was like somebody was was downplaying me and my contribution to something, and I was just thinking like when I was young, I might have been a little bit wild and everything, but I still had a one forty one IQ. I may not have fucking pretended like I had a one forty one IQ, and I may have hidden behind different things, but I'm st- I'm still the same smart motherfucker behind a cloud of smoke. Behind a cloud of smoke, and you know what? And the one thing that I that I've always like collected is that friends that I will communicate with and that I can communicate with. And, you know, part of what I was thinking about was the fact that because I was thinking about Reg and how we all and like Grant had said about Reg. What I like about Reg is that he listens. And that's a trait that goes with all of us and all of my friends. We all listen to one another and we respond. You know, there's no jumping on Mm -hmm. each other's backs. We're not trying to fucking impress. Nobody's trying to peacock. And I just was wondering how could we get that, how could we get the rest of the world to stop peacocking? And it's not just the men, it's the women as well, because women are trying to peacock too. They want to be men, or they want to have the perceived power of men. And they're peacocking for that. And it's like, that's that's your perception. It's just really like it's I, I don't know. Maybe I'll figure it out sometime between Monday and Friday and I'll have another show. <laughs> I you know, he might you might brother Numsy. I might. I might have to. But for the time being I'm gonna have to let you go, Mr. Brooks from with the good looks. From New Jersey, Mr. Robert Brooks. What up, what up? Good to be back with y'all. For the moment. Yes, sir. Some, good to have I you guess back, some, Richard. I guess I'm good on, on, I don't have a, a Monday basketball game for a while, so I'm good. All right, that's what's up. And of course, from Detroit, Michigan, the City Wayne King. City Wayne King. Great Lancaster. That's right. And you know that's what? right. Just one more quick quick aside note I also figured out, too. I don't think I like men with small penises because they seem to be all uptight. And I've only heard rumors about you guys I'm, being hung. So I think we get along pretty well. I think we get along pretty well because I think we understand of how that how that actually works. You know, because I think there's something about the man with the small penis that makes him feel that he has to try to prove himself more. But, you know, when you're hung, you don't have to worry about these things. So, Born in Trouble, 23rd episode. See y'all next week. <laughs> right. You're a wild boy. <laughs>